Hello everyone. This is the 12th part of the story, Marvel Unlimited Skills, I can download. Chapter 86, Secret Base. But all of this needed to be done slowly, and Bruce was in no rush. One of his greatest advantages was the fact that he knew exactly how the plot would develop in the future, and with the unlimited download system, he was able to execute his plans and change the plot to his benefit. After leaving the meeting spot, Bruce returned to the Avengers base. Because of the increase in his strength, Bruce's status in S.H.I.E.L.D. could be said to be very special. Officially, he was an ordinary agent. However to treat him as one would be disrespectful, as he had the strength of a superhero, and an extremely powerful one at that. But at the same time, he couldn't be a superhero as he was not among the Avengers. His status was indeed very special, but regardless, level 7 and 8 agents were very polite when they saw him. Of course Bruce didn't care much about that, because his sights were no longer here. That night, Bruce did nothing. Instead, he was secretly planning and modifying his plan about the future. In order to succeed when facing powerful organizations like S.H.I.E.L.D. and HYDRA, a slight mistake would result in a massive failure that would ruin his plan. While he was not afraid of his plans being revealed because he wasn't bothered by the S.H.I.E.L.D. or HYDRA's power, he was worried that he would no longer be able to speed up the plot as much as he wanted. After all, from the The Avengers to The Avengers, Infinity War, the plot according to the movies would go on for several years, and Bruce didn't want to wait that long. Early the next morning, someone knocked on Bruce's door. When he opened the door, he saw an agent that he was not familiar with. But he did recognize him, it was one of the agents who was with Pierce that night. Mr. Bruce, come with me. The agent said respectfully. He was a level 7 agent at S.H.I.E.L.D. But before this, even in front of a level 9 agent like Hill, he would not show much respect since he was one of Pierce's men. But what Bruce did yesterday revealed how overbearing he was when he directly trashed five of their elites even when he knew their identity. Since he couldn't guarantee that Bruce wouldn't do that to him for not giving him respect, he chose to bow his head. Upon hearing his words, Bruce nodded and followed him out. Soon after, they boarded a helicopter in the Avengers airport and directly left. After flying for three hours, they arrived at a private airport. Before arriving at that secret base, Bruce had changed planes three times and used five types of transportation. During this period of time, Bruce's eyes were blindfolded. Based on this, one could imagine the importance of this base. These actions also meant that Pierce didn't fully trust him, otherwise he wouldn't do this to a person with Bruce's status. Sadly for them however, they didn't know that Bruce had spider telepathy, which meant that he could see his surroundings even without visual sight. While entering the base, Bruce had secretly memorized the specific location of this base. And after a full day of travel, Bruce took the last helicopter and arrived at a mountain. This was somewhere in northern Europe, it was covered in snow all year round and it looked like a vast expanse of whiteness, making it difficult for people to recognize where it was. It was only when midnight arrived that Bruce finally saw a villa on the mountain peak. In fact, it was more like a fortress than a villa. Around this villa, there were many fortresses and trenches, extending thousands of meters around. This place was extremely tightly guarded, making it a relative dead zone. As long as someone approached the 10-kilometer range of this place, they would be discovered immediately, and dealt with appropriately. In the surroundings of the fortress, there were all types of radar equipment that covered the surrounding aviation field. Around the main base, there were also several layers of tight grids. Bruce speculated that this place should be where the first starting battles between Germany and the Soviet Union during World War II had taken place. This was basically a war military base. Even the military bases of some weak countries were inferior to this place. The defensive power of the Ten Rings organization was almost nothing compared to this place. It was no wonder that Hydra could exist for so long. After half an hour of rigorous inspection, Bruce finally entered the range of the main base. Stop! At this moment, a guard leader stopped Bruce. I need to examine the things on you. He looked straight at Bruce, a chill in his eyes. But Bruce didn't mind, and let him check his belongings. After all, except for some flying knives and guns, Bruce had no special items. 
After the inspection, he finally officially entered the main base. After which, he was arranged a room, and the others left. It was worth saying that the entire room was filled with surveillance equipment. Any movement he made would be discovered and analyzed by Hydra. Upon seeing all this, Bruce didn't think much. He looked at the huge mirror on the wall, and a smile formed on his face. Behind the mirror, five people stood next to a door, and two of them seemed to be heads. One of them was a bald man with glasses, while the other one was an old man, whose eyes shone with wisdom. The bald man was the current leader of Hydra, Wolfgang von Strucker, also known as Baron Strucker. While the white old man was the chief scientist of Hydra, Dr. List. He saw us, Dr. List said. Behind the mirror, Bruce's expression was quite calm, but Baron Strucker didn't say anything to him. He was recommended by Pierce and should be no problem, Dr. List said. Pierce said he has superpowers and he has trained Rogers in the past. The Baron coldly said. As he looked in Bruce's eyes he hoped to find something, but he discovered nothing. Yes, we have also investigated him, and he is indeed no problem. But I have never seen this person in Hydra's file. Dr. List said. While he said that, they could also not prove that Bruce was not a member of Hydra. The reason for this, was that in the battle 70 years ago, they had suffered heavy losses, and those who survived had either hidden themselves or returned. Even if he was old and capable, he was still not able to distinguish if Bruce's identity was real or fake. The powers of those twins are very unstable at the moment, we need to hurry up, said the Baron. Following which he walked into the room and towards Bruce. Upon seeing him, Bruce calmly looked at him and didn't speak. Hello. The Baron greeted Bruce warmly, a complete opposite of the way he was looking at Bruce just seconds before. Bruce knew him and instantly recognized him, this man was one of the current top leaders of Hydra. It could definitely be said that the Baron was the most important person within Hydra with the addition of the Red Skull. This meant that this secret base was the real headquarters of Hydra, and not just an important hideout. Chapter 87, Supreme Leader Upon seeing the Baron, it could be said that Bruce's plan had already been half successful. Whereafter, Bruce smiled in response, hello. Baron Stafford sat down and motioned for Bruce to sit down as well. At this moment, the Baron seemed like he was very hospitable, and did not seem like he was the leader of a terrorist organization at all. But Bruce didn't believe in this act for a second. To be able to be in the position he was in, was impossible without being highly intelligent as well as ruthless. This was especially because the Baron and Captain America were the same age. It was only because he had been injected with some type of genetic virus that his face had maintained its original state. Welcome to the base, there are many things here for you to do. But for the moment, you should have a good rest before you begin, said the Baron. He decided not to let Bruce meet the twins right off the bat, as he didn't know Bruce's purpose in coming here. Naturally Bruce didn't mind, because he knew exactly what the Baron was worried about. Regardless, his plan needed to be taken step by step, and this wasn't an issue. Apologies, I have yet to introduce myself. My name is Wolfgang von Strucker, but you can just call me Strucker. Strucker introduced himself, but did not shake hands with Bruce. Bruce didn't mind that either and immediately responded, Bruce Light. After their introductions, Strucker whispered something to his men before turning around and leaving. He had only come here to reaffirm Bruce and maybe get a feel for him. Although the twins were currently in an unstable state, he would still not let Bruce instantly come into contact with them. He was a very cautious man, but Bruce didn't reveal anything through his expression. Loki's scepter contained the mind gem, and the superpowers created using that power would all be unstable to a certain extent. Moreover before that, the twins were merely ordinary people, so alongside the side effects of the mind gem, the twins would definitely experience a sudden loss of control one day. And that day, would be the perfect day for Bruce to take action. After Baron Strucker left, Bruce laid down on his bed and relaxed. He knew that no matter what action he took now, there would always be people watching his every movement. Therefore, in order to temporarily dispel their doubts, he had to put on a perfect act and not do anything for a period of time. In reality, 
even if he was not being constantly monitored, he would still have a lot of time to kill before that day came. According to the progression of the plot, the plot of Captain America 2 was about to begin. And after that, followed the Avengers, Age of Ultron, and the Sokovia War. When that time came, he would need to simply let Iron Man produce Ultron, and he would be in line with the direction of the plot. He had been waiting around for seven days straight now, and during these seven days, a special group of people would bring him food. His movements hadn't been restricted at all, he was even allowed to enter and leave the base at will. His only limitation was that he wasn't allowed access to some crucial places, which was understandable. Bruce knew very well what Hydra was doing right now, so he wasn't in a hurry to begin what he came here to do, and was instead taking his time. And as he thought, during these seven days, Strucker and Dr. List had been observing Bruce's behavior. But so far, they had not found any abnormalities, no matter how small. Pierce has been very cautious. Seven days have already passed, and he has been very law-abiding, Dr. List said, his brows furrowed deeply. Because the twins were already in a very unstable state prior to Bruce coming here, during these seven days of observation, they were forced to use all sorts of methods to stabilize them. The longer they took and the more they hesitated, the more unstable the twins would become, and in turn the more dangerous and less valuable. In fact, at this point their berserk and unstable state had already become a lot more difficult to restrain, and soon they wouldn't be able to even if they wanted to. I need to observe him for a longer period, Strucker said, obviously deciding that being careful was the priority even if said man was personally recommended by Pierce. Boom! Right at that moment, the entire room shook. Boom! In two large transparent rooms, a man and a woman were continuously attacking the glass walls as if they had gone mad. The woman's body emitted red lights, and her entire body was suspended in the air. As for the specially made glass wall, it was on the verge of splitting apart under her attacks. In the other room, a man kept running at an incredibly fast pace, making normal people unable to see his movements. They could only briefly catch the indistinct shadow he leaves behind sometimes. His speed had exceeded the range that the monitor could observe, making the monitoring equipment useless in this case. Boom! The two rooms kept shaking, and the face of the surrounding Hydra members changed greatly, for fear that the two would break out. At this moment, Bruce, who was staying in his room, slowly opened his eyes, and a smile appeared on his face. The twins had finally gone out of control. Mr. Strucker, Dr. List, the twins are about to break open their rooms. A person came to Baron Strucker's side, his face looking extremely pale. There was nothing they could do about such unstable superpowers. Boom! At this moment, an even more intense shaking began, making Baron Strucker and Dr. List's expressions even more unsightly. Before that, they had been using some means to suppress the twins, but now it seemed that they had finally become unable to suppress them any longer. Although with their current force, they still had some ways to deal with the twins. But if they really fought head-on with the twins, the damage they would sustain would be far too great. Doctor, you go and put away the scepter, I'll go see what that Bruce can really do. Strucker finally made his decision, and walked out the door as soon as he gave the doctor his orders. He was still very careful and suspected that Bruce's goal could be Loki's scepter, so he decided to kill two birds with one stone by safeguarding the scepter and letting Bruce do his job at the same time. Dr. List returned to the research room and locked the scepter in a safe box very carefully. Boom! The shaking continued, but Bruce merely sat cross-legged inside his room, relaxing. Mr. Bruce, we need your help. At this moment, Baron Strucker suddenly opened the door and yelled anxiously at Bruce. Bruce opened his eyes, a smile appeared on his face, what's happening Baron, is there an earthquake? Upon seeing Bruce's unhurried expression, Strucker appeared to become even more anxious. At the same time though, he was also sure that Bruce definitely had some way to deal with the situation. Come with me. He didn't explain and directly led Bruce to where the twins were. Bruce followed him through numerous lines of defense, and the rumblings grew louder and louder as he came closer to his destination. Finally, three minutes later, Bruce arrived in front of the two huge transparent rooms. 
This place was already filled with Hydra agents holding submachine guns, who appeared to be preparing to attack as soon as the twins broke out. But their weapons were all non-lethal, as Hydra still wanted that power. At this moment, as Bruce looked at the two transparent rooms, he finally saw the twins, Quicksilver and Scarlet Witch. Boom! Once again, the ground shook even more intensely this time, before the glass wall in front of the Scarlet Witch finally exploded. The red-colored magic power rushed out, and all of the Hydra agents immediately fell down, as weak as kittens in front of that power. In the other room, Quicksilver also managed to break out at that time, and with his speed, capturing him was going to prove to be an impossible task. Mr. Bruce, Strucker was also desperate now, as this crisis was almost unprecedented for Hydra. But as soon as he finished speaking, Quicksilver had already arrived in front of him. Chapter 88, Quicksilver and Scarlet Witch Quicksilver's speed was on another level. Even if his strength was far below adequate for a person with his powers, as a person with that amount of speed, his strength naturally showed a huge increase alongside his acceleration. Bruce himself was even shocked at his speed. In fact, if it were not for his spider telepathy ability, he would be hard-pressed to find a trace of Quicksilver, let alone fight him. When Quicksilver passed by him, he felt him, but he didn't stop him. Boom! At a ridiculous speed that Baron Strucker couldn't even fathom, he was hit and flung directly into a wall. The strength that came with that speed made him instantly spit out blood, with some of his bones on the verge of breaking. But Quicksilver continued to move at that alarming speed. The only thing different was that this time, his target was Bruce. As soon as he felt himself being targeted, Bruce felt a trace of crisis. Although he couldn't capture Quicksilver's movement with his eyes, he definitely could with his instincts. Without the slightest hesitation, Bruce's body turned into magma all over, and his whole person exuded a heat of thousands of degrees. Boom! Sizzle! Quicksilver who was too late to stop his attack, chose to go through with it with all he had. Unfortunately for him however, he couldn't bear such a high temperature at all. Upon coming in contact with Bruce, his palm sizzled, and then he immediately tried to escape in rapid succession. A light flashed in Bruce's eyes, as because Quicksilver had been injured, he was now able to clearly see his movement. He quickly attacked with the intention of beating Quicksilver in one fell swoop. But just at the moment he was about to attack, his whole body flew uncontrollably away. He was surprised to find that around him a red magic power had wrapped around his body, constantly squeezing him with a ridiculous strength. Bruce's face instantly changed, as he knew that he couldn't bear the Scarlet Witch's power. Knowing that he could no longer continue his act, Bruce instantly stopped hiding his power, and an amazing strength burst out from his whole body. He took the buttons off of his clothes and shot them all towards the Scarlet Witch. Previously, Hawkeye had been able to demonstrate a terrifying strength when using a coin, not to mention what the current Bruce could do. Boom! The Scarlet Witch's face changed, and she ducked away from the buttons. Because of this, Bruce could escape from her weird red magic power and had resumed his ability to move normally. He didn't give Scarlet Witch another chance to attack, and he appeared in front of her almost instantly. Bruce raised his hand and grabbed her by the neck, choking her and almost breaking her neck by accident. The Scarlet Witch's magic power was indeed powerful, but her close combat ability was completely insufficient. How could she bear Bruce's strength? Ah! Scarlet Witch yelled in pain, her face turning pale. She attempted to perform her magic again, but Bruce didn't give her another chance to do so, and bashed her head against a wall. Thump! Fortunately, Bruce brought his strength under control, or else with this blow the Scarlet Witch's head would instantly burst open. After bearing such an attack, the Scarlet Witch fainted on the spot. Ah! Quicksilver shouted loudly. Bearing the pain of his injured body, he grabbed a huge steel plate and rushed towards Bruce. Bruce however simply threw down the fainted Scarlet Witch who was still in his hand, and punched out towards the incoming steel plate. Boom! While Quicksilver wasn't strong by himself, with physics on his side his strength grew proportionately, and had grown to a state where he had the advantage over Bruce for the first time. But Bruce didn't step back. 
At this moment, every cell in his body exuded a powerful electrical current, which directly transmitted to Quicksilver's body through the steel plate. Although Quicksilver had become super strong, in the face of such a strong electrical current, he could do nothing but faint. When using the power of his control of thunder and lightning ability, Bruce had done so out of view of the Hydra members, so to them it seemed like Bruce simply had the advantage in terms of strength. As of this moment, Quicksilver and Scarlet Witch had both fainted and had temporarily lost their freedom once again. Upon seeing that battle in person, Strucker and Dr. List were both shocked. The battle had ended so simply, and so quickly, that before they could even respond to the situation, it was already over. They finally knew why Pierce had highly recommended this person to them. He had an ogreish strength that they couldn't even describe properly. Bruce on the other hand, upon looking at the two now fainted twins, didn't change his expression at all. He hadn't even bothered to check their abilities just now because he still had a lot of time left. Mr. Bruce, your power is really beyond my expectations. Strucker stood up, still clearly shocked by Bruce's combat prowess. He had seen some pictures and videos of Bruce fighting in the New York War, but he did not expect that even if he was without his armor, Bruce could still be so powerful. Before that, he didn't trust Bruce, because first of all he had his doubts about him, and second and more importantly, he didn't expect Bruce to hold such power. But after seeing it in person, Bruce's power had completely conquered him, making him almost salivate at the thought of having Bruce by his side. After all, in Hydra, strength was everything. Lord Baron, thank you for your compliment, Bruce gave him a slight smile, as if to say that the battle he had just gone through was nothing worth mentioning. Just call me Strucker in the future. As you can see, these twins were discovered by us a long time ago, but after training them, we found that they could not control their power at all. Pierce recommended you here with the intention of you training them. Strucker still didn't mention Loki's scepter, and he also didn't mention that these twins got their superpowers by using the power of the scepter. Clearly, although he really admired Bruce's power, he was still very careful around him. To get Mr. Strucker's trust, it is my honor, said Bruce. After this incident, although he did not get Strucker to completely put down his guard around him, he was close, and the treatment he received was vastly different. Shut them up again, Dr. List ordered their men at this time. Even if these twins had fainted for now, they still posed a huge danger to all of them. Subsequently, Bruce, Strucker and the others left the area. During this period, the members of Hydra had obviously changed their attitude towards Bruce. Strength was very important no matter where it was placed, and this was especially highlighted in a place such as Hydra. The powers of Pietro and Wanda are very strong. As you have seen, one of them has speed that I've never seen before, far beyond ordinary people's imagination. As for Wanda, she owns a more powerful magic power, which we call, chaotic magic, which is perfect in both its controlling and attacking ability. Dr. List explained the twins' abilities to Bruce, so that it would be more convenient for him to make a training plan for them. Before that, they had done many experiments, and only these two people had obtained such powerful abilities. Even if they could produce more of them in the future, people with these two exact abilities would probably never appear again. This was because the power of Loki's scepter was not something they could understand. And for now, they were forced to stop their experiments in making superheroes. With the help of these two people, even if they couldn't compete with the Avengers yet, it would at least make it very difficult to destroy them. The pair of twins could be regarded as Hydra's trump card. Got it. If I can, I will start training them tomorrow. Bruce said. The twins were still very immature in their use of their abilities, but with his training, he could make them reach the maturity stage in the shortest time possible. At the same time, he still had 3,000 points of energy value left over, which were especially reserved for this pair of twins. Chapter 89, Killing Intent Fortunately, Bruce had kept enough energy value before, otherwise, even if he met these twins this time, he wouldn't be able to download their abilities. Whether it was Quicksilver or the Scarlet Witch, both of them had withstood the baptism of the power of the Mind Gem, and the abilities they had obtained were very powerful. Especially the Scarlet Witch, her ability was extremely strong and suited for combat. 
In the Avengers Infinity War, Scarlet Witch destroyed the Mind Gem alone with her strength. Although it was mostly because their source energy was the same, one could still see just how powerful her ability was. It could be said that Scarlet Witch was the most underrated superhero in the whole Marvel Cinematic Universe. However with that said, a factor of that was because her power had never fully developed. Otherwise, with her prowess, it would not be far-fetched to say that she could be the most powerful Avenger. Before that, when he was fighting her, Bruce had felt how powerful her ability really was. Moreover this was just the initial phase of her ability, if she could fully develop it, there was a possibility that she could even go head to head with Thanos. For now, Bruce's main task was to fully gain the trust of this pair of twins. In the meantime, he would download their abilities, and to make matters even better, after completing the task he would get a good sum of energy value back. Subsequently, Bruce began to make the training plan for them based on the twins' abilities. He was put into deep thought, as making a plan for raising their strength in the shortest time possible as well as stabilizing them was not exactly easy. That night, Bruce did nothing else. And by next morning, he had basically completed the training plan. Hello, Mr. Bruce. Mr. Strucker is looking for you, a Hydra agent opened the door of Bruce's room and said, with a look of admiration on his face. Almost every Hydra agent had seen yesterday's battle, and for those who haven't, they still know of his prowess of being able to suppress the twins alone. Okay, Bruce responded, and then left following that Hydra agent. Soon after, they came to an extremely empty site in the base, it looked just like a coliseum. Strucker stood not far from Bruce, with his hands crossed in front of his chest. Sir, Mr. Bruce is here, that Hydra agent lightly said, and then directly left. Mr. Bruce, these twins will be handed over to you starting from today. Baron Strucker said as he looked at the training ground, where there was a huge transparent room that caged the twins. They had woken up after that battle, but their emotions were still very unstable. The twins immediately noticed Bruce just as he appeared, their eyes revealing the deep fear they had of him. Bruce nodded and directly said, no problem. After that, Strucker just left, meaning that he had fully entrusted this matter to Bruce. Bruce walked slowly into the center of the site, and the twin's face appeared solemn as Bruce approached. Because the glass in the room was specially made, they could not hear anything outside. Bruce glanced at the twins and then casually opened the room. Beep. The glass wall raised, and the twins had officially met Bruce for the first time outside of combat. Whoosh! Just as the glass room opened itself, Quicksilver instantly attacked, his whole body just leaving a barely noticeable shadow. No one was able to see his figure, let alone grasp his movements. However Bruce was able to fight him regardless of that, as he used his supervision ability, making him able to react to whatever Quicksilver did. If it was anyone else, they would die without knowing what hit them. Without any delay, Bruce's body overflowed with magma, like a demon crawling out from hell. And at the same time, he used his spider telepathy. Boom! This time, Quicksilver didn't touch Bruce's body as he had obviously learned his lesson the previous time. But Bruce had already predicted his movements. Just as Quicksilver rushed to him, dozens of specially made flying knives appeared in Bruce's hand. Each flying knife thrown released a sound akin to a small bomb. Boom! After dozens of explosions sounded out in succession, everything around them burst apart. Quicksilver's speed was really fast, but he still couldn't just ignore these explosions. With that said, he was forced to back away. A light flashed in Bruce's eyes, and the spiderweb launcher in his hands directly shot several hundred webs. In just a thousandth of a second, Quicksilver was wrapped up like a dumpling and his mobility was completely restrained. But Bruce still didn't stop and wanted to take Quicksilver down directly. However, with a flash, he suddenly backed a few tens of meters away. The Scarlet Witch had made her move, her hands shooting out several orbs of her red magic power towards Bruce. As Bruce was trying to end this as quickly as possible, he decided to confront this attack head-on and threw out dozens of flying knives once again. Boom! All of these flying knives were hit away by her magical power, and they weren't able to reach anywhere near the Scarlet Witch at all. But that was exactly what he was going for, as by the time she could react, 
Bruce had already appeared beside her, and shot out spiderwebs once again. These were not ordinary spiderwebs, but ones infused with the power of thunder and lightning after undergoing Bruce's remolding. Sizzle, sizzle. The next moment, Scarlet Witch was trapped. And the power of the thunder and lightning of the spiderwebs made her paralyzed, not able to wield her powers at all. In less than a minute, the twins had been beaten down decisively by Bruce once again. Both of you have very powerful abilities, however you cannot yet use those powers to their full potential. To me, you two are nothing more than children and are far from being a threat, Bruce slowly said, looking very relaxed. In fact, Bruce's words were spot on. The two of them had powerful abilities but were without any combat experience, so no matter how many times they tried to beat him, they were simply not a threat to him. Of course, this could only be said because the person they were facing was Bruce, who had multiple abilities with a similarly ridiculous strength, and a lot of combat experience to boot. If it was anyone else, they would already be dead. Don't get complacent, let me try again. Quicksilver shouted to Bruce. He was extremely fast, but he couldn't use that speed in the way he wanted to. Yet even though he had been defeated by Bruce twice now, he was still not convinced. Do you think I'm here to play with you? A cold light flashed in Bruce's eyes, and the flames on his body rose again. His whole body was just like a small sun, exuding thousands of degrees of heat. At this moment, the twins not only felt the terrifying temperature on Bruce's body, but also the boundless killing intent he was releasing. For the first time in a very long time, they were speechless. If this was a real battle, you would already be dead. If that's what you want, I can let you try again. Bruce stood there, the heat on his body exploding once again. The spiderwebs that were restricting the Scarlet Witch and Quicksilver instantly melted when faced with that scorching temperature, and the two of them had recovered their mobility. Yet the twins didn't move and instantly attacked this time. When they looked at the demon-like Bruce who was emanating such terrifying killing intent, they got intimidated. This was real killing intent, how could they not feel it? They were being told to be obedient and listen to him, or be mischievous and die. Chapter 90, Abilities This was a very strong oppressing feeling, which made the twins' faces immediately turn pale. At present, they were only ordinary people and not the superheroes they would be in the future. They had merely gotten some powerful abilities not too long ago, and so it was normal for ordinary people like them to be afraid in front of death. Yet still, Bruce's current expression was filled with disappointment, as he still expected more from such figures. On the other hand, the twins did not dare make a move, as they had been beaten by Bruce twice in a row now, even after using their abilities. Even if they attacked once again, in their eyes the result wouldn't change, so it was pointless to die for nothing, hence they opted to calm down instead. Bruce didn't care about the twins' thoughts at all. He knew he had to use the force to compel them, and there was nothing more to it. If he wanted to have a good talk with out-of-control bras like them, he had to first make them fear him. This was the simplest and most effective method he could think of. Sure enough, after Bruce said that, the twins were no longer naughty. In the face of death, it was natural for ordinary people like them to be afraid. The same would be true even if they weren't in the unstable state they were in right now. This was simply one of the natural weaknesses of human. Have the two of you decided? From today onwards, the two of you will completely obey my orders, Bruce was very calm when facing the two of them. The twins looked at each other and took a deep breath before nodding. Even though they were very dissatisfied with the situation, they were too weak to say no to Bruce at present, so they nodded in response. This is your training plan. In the future, strictly follow the training details above. Bruce took out a document. That was the training plan he worked hard to make out the previous night. It was made specifically for the both of them taking into account their specialties, and it could be considered a very valuable document for Hydra. The two took the training plan from Bruce's hands and nodded. At the same time, in a dark corner near them, Dr. List and Strucker were hidden there, observing the situation. His strength is truly very terrifying, I only hope that he will be absolutely loyal to the organization, Baron Strucker said with a solemn expression. People like this could be very troublesome, and at this point Strucker could only hope for the best. 
Pierce said that we should keep an eye on him. His identity doesn't have a problem, but the biggest issue with him is that he seems to not like obeying orders, said Dr. List. He was actually able to understand their thoughts, as people with too much power would usually have or develop that sort of personality. Let's go. At the very least we no longer need to worry about their training or them going out of control, said Strucker. He also stopped monitoring Bruce, as this was one of the things they had discussed. Bruce would keep his training plan details secret, and in return he would train them inside the base. As long as Bruce trained the twins until they were fully developed, then their goal would be achieved. After the Hydra agents left, a hint of a smile appeared on Bruce's face. If no one was there to monitor him, then the rest of his plan would progress a lot more smoothly. He then looked at the twins and said, let me introduce myself, my name's Bruce Light, after which he stretched out his palm. Scarlet Witch hesitated for a moment, but then shook his hand and also introduced herself, Wanda Maximoff. It needed to be said that Scarlet Witch's figure was indeed perfect without any flaws. In some ways, she was even more attractive than Black Widow. The current Scarlet Witch was very young, and whether it be for better or worse, she had been inside the Hydra base for as long as she knew. She had never come into contact with the outside world, and could be considered very simple and pure. When Bruce and the Scarlet Witch's hands touched together, the information of the Scarlet Witch immediately appeared in Bruce's mind. Name, Wanda Maximoff. Identity, Scarlet Witch. Ability, Origin Spirit Power, Energy Value, 10,000 points, Defective, Origin Magic Power, Energy Value, 10,000 points, Defective, Mental Impact, Energy Value, 5,000 points, Defective, Magic Ball, Energy Value, 3,000 points, Defective, Magic Flight, Energy Value, 2,000 points, Defective. The Scarlet Witch didn't have too many abilities, she only had five, and all of which were not in their best state. Yet each of them were incomparably powerful when used to their full potential. The Origin Magic Power ability was valued at 10,000 points of energy value even in its defective state. If it was the fully developed version of the ability, the energy value required would definitely reach up to 50,000, or maybe even 100,000 points. As it was very well known, the Origin Magic Power ability was incomparably powerful, and even Doctor Strange wouldn't be able to compete with it. Once this ability reached its strongest state, it could even affect the real world and make something out of nothing. It was the same as Hulk's abilities, in terms of the fact that the level to which Scarlet Witch's magic power could grow was ultimately dependent on her origin spirit power. Similar to Phoenix, once she got out of control and would be at her breaking point because the origin spirit power had reached its limit, Scarlet Witch would be fully capable of beating Thanos by herself. In simpler terms, it could be said that she would be extremely powerful in that state. Besides that, the Scarlet Witch was also capable of affecting others' spirit and mind. In the Avengers, Age of Ultron, Iron Man had created Ultron under the influence of the Scarlet Witch. While she only had five abilities, each one was incomparably powerful and made up for what she lacked in terms of number of abilities, with the quality of her abilities. But currently all of her abilities were defective, and even besides that, they required a lot of energy value which Bruce did not have at the moment. Downloading all of her abilities was almost useless to Bruce. Although the attack power of her magic ball was still quite strong, it was a bit worse than Bruce's control of thunder and lightning ability. As for her magic flight ability, Bruce also had no need for it for the time being. In reality, even if he wanted it he didn't have the necessary points of energy value. With that said, Bruce decided not to download the Scarlet Witch's abilities for the time being. After which, he released her palm and turned his gaze towards Quicksilver. As opposed to the Scarlet Witch, Bruce was more interested in Quicksilver's abilities. As the old saying went, in the world of martial arts, speed dictated the winner. As long as you were fast enough, you could in theory remain invincible, something similar to the Flash from the DC comics. When one speed reached a certain level, they could even affect time and space. So, Bruce's main goal for now was obtaining Quicksilver's abilities. Seeing that Bruce had stretched out his hand towards him, Quicksilver gave Wanda a glance, and then also shook his hand, Pietro Maximoff. At the same time, Quicksilver's information also appeared in Bruce's mind. Name, 
Pietro Maximov. Identity, Quicksilver. Ability, High Speed Movement, Energy Value, 3000 Points, Defective, Body Strengthening, 500 Gigabyte. These were all of Quicksilver's abilities, a measly two. Of which, one was a High Speed Movement ability, which gave him the quickness he had previously shown off, and the other one was a very ordinary body strengthening ability, which gave him the ability to survive touching Bruce's flames for a moment. It was needless to say that Bruce had no need for that kind of strengthening at present, but his real goal had been Quicksilver's movement ability all along, so he was not disappointed. Bruce's eyes lit up upon seeing the required points of energy value for his movement ability. Although it was called the high-speed movement ability, the key point of the ability was speed rather than movement. Bruce had secretly calculated Quicksilver's speed beforehand, and he got an astonishing 6 to 700,000 km per hour. In other words, Quicksilver's speed could reach 10,000 km per minute, which was simply appalling when one thought about it. However the most ridiculous thing about it, was that the ability was still in its defective state. Chapter 91, Quicksilver's Ability If it were the real and fully developed version of the high-speed movement ability, one could probably even reach the speed of light relying on it. At that speed, no matter how weak a person's strength was, they would be able to strike out with shocking strength, instantly annihilating almost anything that didn't have enough defensive properties to handle it. Of course, as with all abilities at this level, things weren't so simple. The condition that had to be fulfilled to travel at such a speed was that one needed a suitably strong physical body. Otherwise using that ability would be akin to suicide. Quicksilver was the perfect example of this, as while he could move at an even faster speed at the moment, he didn't dare do so as his body may just crumble on the spot. Bruce on the other hand, was very different in that regard. His body could be compared to that of a real god's body, and the maximum speed he could move at was probably three to four times faster than Quicksilver. With that said, that didn't mean that his body was merely three to four times stronger than that of Quicksilver's. On the contrary, his body couldn't even be compared to that of Quicksilver's. The reason he could only move so fast, was because the higher the speed, the greater the pressure needed to be sustained, and it escalated the faster one got. While thinking of this, Bruce decided to download Quicksilver's ability. Although it was defective in its current state, he didn't mind. Even with the defective version of this ability, the speed it provided him would make his combat power improve by a lot. Without any further hesitation, Bruce started the download. Beep, connection successful. Beep, the energy value required to download the high-speed movement ability is 3000 points. Do you wish to proceed? Yes. Beep, download complete. Beep, congratulations on obtaining the high-speed movement ability. The moment Bruce obtained the ability, there was an inexplicable change to his body. This change was not on a cellular level, but instead it was his telepathy and sensitivity that had undergone a change. He felt as if everything around him had slowed down, to the point where Scarlet Witch and Quicksilver were basically motionless. It was only after a long time had passed did he see the two of them slowly blink their eyes once. During this period of time, Bruce had been able to run a few kilometers and return to the same spot without them noticing anything. This ability of Quicksilver's was absolutely terrifying. After Bruce took a deep breath, everything around him returned back to normal speed. Very good. From today onwards, you two will begin your training, after which, Bruce saw down at a corner and began to familiarize himself with his new ability. All of his training plans had been written in the document he had previously given them. As for their training, they would supervise themselves, as it was all reliant on their self-restraint. Mr. Bruce, you should know that the faster I am the more strength I'll be able to exert. Why are you still making me train my body strength? The moment Quicksilver browsed through Bruce's plans, he instantly spotted that and was a little dissatisfied. He was remarkably fast, and such speed meant that he didn't need to be strong at all. In his opinion, this was completely unnecessary and was a waste of time and effort. When the Scarlet Witch heard her brother's dissatisfied words, she immediately grabbed his arm and said, Pietro, stop it. Truthfully, she was very afraid of Bruce now, but was also a little curious about him at the same time. However after their brief contact, she knew that Bruce was far from kind, unlike how he looked on the surface. 
But Quicksilver didn't listen to Wanda this time, instead he kept staring at Bruce for an answer. Even if an egg-sized meteorite falls onto the Earth, it would also cause unimaginable destructive power. So you are right, the faster one is the more powerful one would be. However, what would happen to the egg-sized meteorite after it falls? After hearing Bruce's words, Quicksilver's face quickly turned pale. Even if one was a child, they would still understand the concept Bruce was referring to. Although the fast speed of the meteorite would result in equally powerful destructive power, the meteorite was not strong enough and hence would get smashed into pieces upon contact. As the matter of fact, this was also the biggest shortcoming of Quicksilver. If one let him go blow for blow against the Hulk, he would even have the advantage. However Hulk would survive the blow, while he wouldn't. For a moment, Quicksilver had no words to say, as he understood how foolish he had been. Regardless however, he was ultimately still a boy. I don't care about this. What I want to say is that we should fight once more with you only using your strength. If I lose, I will follow your training plan. But if you lose, how I train will be up to myself. When facing someone stronger than him, there was a type of stubbornness that would come out, especially prevalent in this age. Quicksilver's confidence in his speed was also a big factor that weighed in on this, as he believed that if Bruce didn't use any special means, he wouldn't be defeated. Even though he understood that what Bruce said was correct, he was still unwilling to admit it. Even at this point he didn't believe himself to be weaker than Bruce. Are you sure? Just now, he had been thinking on how to test his new ability, but now someone had come over voluntarily. Moreover, that person was Quicksilver, who was the perfect candidate. Mr. Bruce, Pietro is just a little uncomfortable in his heart. Don't argue with him. We will follow your training plan. Looking at Bruce's cold eyes, Wanda was very worried that Bruce would kill Quicksilver. Wanda, stop. Bruce doesn't dare. In front of Wanda, Pietro walked up and half crouched down slowly. Even if Bruce did not agree, he would still have to force his way out. But at this moment, Bruce moved. Everything slowed down, and Bruce disappeared completely. Wanda couldn't stop him at all, she just stood there in a daze. In fact, it was mostly because her reaction speed was too slow. In Bruce's eyes, she was still motionless. At this moment, Quicksilver also realized that. He was shocked to see that Bruce had disappeared in front of him and then turned into a shadow. It was also upon seeing this that he also used his ability. Facing Bruce, Quicksilver moved at his fastest speed to not be defeated once again. But his speed was still too slow in comparison to Bruce. Every movement of his was clearly seen by Bruce. Bang! Bruce appeared right in front of Quicksilver, and lightly jabbed Quicksilver's body with his finger. Boom! Quicksilver was hit flying backwards. He hit a wall dozens of meters away, and his bones almost broke. After a second, he spat out a mouthful of blood. He completely forgot about the pain his body was in right now, and was instead shocked at Bruce's speed. What had just happened took less than a second. You, how, how could you have such speed? Quicksilver was shocked, he couldn't believe it at all. Even the Scarlet Witch looked at Bruce in shock. She was very terrified upon thinking of their previous confrontation. Had Bruce not revealed his real strength previously? How was Bruce so fast? Do you two think you are the most special people in the world? At this moment, Bruce stood in his original position and stared at Quicksilver who had fallen to the ground. His position had not changed a bit, but he had defeated Quicksilver in what he was best at. Chapter 92 Twins At this time, Quicksilver froze in place and could not believe what had happened at all. His face quickly lost its color not only from the shock, but from the pain his body was feeling, as well as the even more unbearable pain in his heart. As he looked at Bruce now, the obstinate attitude he had just a few seconds ago had completely transformed itself into fear. He had actually been defeated in what he was most proud of, speed. And a complete defeat at that. As Quicksilver struggled to stand up, a trace of tiredness appeared on his face, and he slowly said, from now on, I'm yours. At this point, he was completely conquered by Bruce's strength. 
As for his sister, the Scarlet Witch, she immediately walked up to him and used her chaos magic power to examine his injuries. When dealing with Quicksilver, Bruce hadn't used his full power. Otherwise, Quicksilver's body would not be able to bear his power and would disintegrate. Actually, you can do a lot more than that with your ability. You are very fast, which is your biggest advantage. But as you haven't received professional training, along with the fact that your present body is incapable of withstanding your maximum speed, it's very normal for you to be defeated by me. Bruce looked at Quicksilver, but he did not intend to comfort him. Instead, his words made Quicksilver feel even more disappointed. Mr. Bruce, please stop. The Scarlet Witch had half knelt in front of Quicksilver, and was begging Bruce to stop talking, as she could feel the frustration in her brother building up. If you want to become stronger, you must obey my orders. After my training, you will become one of the strongest people on the earth, Bruce ignored her and continued. He did not deny Quicksilver's ability but instead gave him a little hope. And as expected, Quicksilver's eyes turned sharp the moment he heard Bruce's words. Which human did not want to be the strongest? While there would naturally be such cases, humans, especially men for that matter, had the tendency to dream of being above all. Can I defeat you in the future? This question was very important for Quicksilver. He was defeated by Bruce three times in a row now, so he gave up on beating him temporarily but he definitely wanted to win back a little dignity in the future. Bruce looked at Quicksilver, and a bright smile appeared on his face. But this expression made Quicksilver feel a little cold. Impossible. When this word came out of Bruce's mouth, Quicksilver was stunned at first and then became angry. But Bruce completely ignored him and left him there alone. Today was the first time the twins would train under him, so he gave them a deterrence in order to instill obedience. As long as they were afraid of him, the following things would be easy to carry out. Pietro, are you okay? Asked Wanda. She looked at her brother with concern and a face full of worry. Wanda, I'm fine. And he's right. We must learn how to fight, but I don't believe that I will never be able to defeat him. At this moment, a firm expression appeared on Quicksilver's face. He had decided to defeat Bruce, and made it his most important goal for the future. But Quicksilver didn't know that Bruce had already downloaded his most powerful ability, and would do so once again the moment he brought out the ability's full potential. Upon seeing that her brother was fine, the Scarlet Witch secretly released a sigh of relief. Then she looked at Bruce's back, and her eyes turned bright. After Bruce left, the two picked up the training documents Bruce had given them and read through it in detail. Quicksilver's training plan consisted of him strengthening his body and strength, and the Scarlet Witch's plan revolved around her spiritual strength. The goal in both cases was to indirectly or directly strengthen their main abilities. And with that, their training had started. In the plot of Avengers, Age of Ultron, the twins were just normal people with special abilities, but under Bruce's training, that would definitely be far from the case this time. In the following days, Bruce only did two things. First, he supervised the twins' training, and second, he became familiar with his new ability. It had to be said that Quicksilver's speed was absolutely the most unique ability in the Marvel movie universe. If it was used in battles, it would be especially terrifying and unpredictable. Although the ability Bruce obtained was defective, it didn't make much of a difference. He had already tested its limits before, and his maximum speed could reach 1.8 million kilometers per hour, or 30,000 km per minute. If he ran with all his might, he would be able to return to New York in less than one day. But it was very difficult to maintain this state. Even Quicksilver could only maintain his peak speed for 10 minutes. But as Bruce's body was vastly superior to his, he was able to maintain his peak speed for three hours. After three hours, Bruce's physical strength would be about to reach its limit, and he would enter a period of weakness. This he could easily understand and was one of the reasons he didn't do it. For the time being, Bruce sat in his room. The training had been progressing throughout this half a month, and the twins had made great progress. During this time, using his new ability, Bruce had secretly visited every corner of Hydra S base. He had even seen Loki's scepter, but he could still not download it because he was lacking the necessary points of energy value. 
As for the surveillance cameras of Hydra, they could not capture Bruce's figure at all. As long as Bruce kept moving at a high enough speed, no one would see him. Bruce had also found a lot of important files. With the most important one being news about the Winter Soldier project. This meant that Pierce's plan was being carried out, and it also meant that the plot of Captain America, the Winter Soldier, was about to begin. At the same time, he also discovered that S.H.I.E.L.D. had been met with a major crisis. They had discovered a lot of Hydra agents among their people, and their director, Nick Fury, had been shot dead. Naturally, Bruce was not shocked at this news as he knew that his death was fake, and as time went by, the plot of Captain America, the Winter Soldier, would completely end, and soon after, the plot of Avengers, Age of Ultron, would start. Therefore, Bruce had to find a way to push the plot forward as soon as possible. But before that, he first had to finish his current mission and gain enough energy value for the upcoming plots. He had also been eyeing the Scarlet Witch's ability for a long time now. It's about time, after having a look at the time, Bruce left the room. He came to the site where the Scarlet Witch and Quicksilver usually trained, and as per usual, the two of them were training very hard. During this period of time, Bruce had taught them some combat techniques, but it would still take a relatively long time for them to change from an ordinary person to a superhero. Mr. Bruce, can I learn some fighting techniques? At this moment, the Scarlet Witch appeared next to Bruce with a bright smile on her face. During the short half a month period of training, Bruce had given them a lot of attention because he wanted to complete the task as soon as possible. It was also because of this that the twins no longer had any doubts regarding Bruce and trusted him. At the same time though, Bruce had instilled something in them. Not only did he need to gain the trust of the twins, he also had to completely control them. Similar to Parker, he needed them to become strong and be of use to him. Wanda, you are a very special girl, so many things are not necessary for you to learn. In the future, you will find your own uniqueness, Bruce turned to look at the Scarlet Witch as he said that, which made her face turn a bit awkward. Especially that sentence, you are a very special girl. This raised a strange feeling in the Scarlet Witch. This marks the end of part 12 of the story Marvel Unlimited Skills, I can download. Thank you for listening. Please like the video and hit the subscribe button to listen more. Hit the bell icon to get notified of all the new content uploaded to the channel ASAP.